Welcome to this .NET MAUI Image Editor Control Tutorial. Using SyncFusion.NET MAUI Image Editor's built-in toolbar, you can quickly add, edit, replace, and save images, as well as explore a variety of other editing tools. You can customize each toolbar item by its name and create your personalized toolbar. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to replace toolbar items with images, disable toolbar items, adjust the orientation, create a custom toolbar, and modify the toolbar's appearance. I opened an existing MAUI application. Here I have already configured the SyncFusion image editor control and specified a source BAF for displaying the image. This image is already stored in the resources folder. To learn how to add the .NET MAUI image editor control into your MAUI application, watch the video linked in the YouTube card above or in the description below. Now I run the application. You can see the image is displayed alongside a toolbar with various customization options. You can disable the toolbar by setting the show toolbar property to false. As you can see, the toolbar is now disabled. Before we begin, I modify the Show Toolbar property to True to ensure the toolbar is visible. Next, I'll demonstrate how to customize the existing toolbar items using their names. To do this, I navigate to the main page CS file. First, let me start by customizing the browse icon in the toolbar. This is the default browse icon displayed in the toolbar. To replace it, I create a new instance of an image and assign it to the variable browse image. I then set the source property to the image that will replace the browse icon. This image is already stored in the resources folder. Then let me set the desired height and width for the image. Now I retrieve the first toolbar from the image editor. Following that, I access the first group of items within the toolbar and store it in the toolbar group variable. Toolbars typically contain groups of items, and here the focus is on the first group. Next, I search through the toolbar group for an item named Browse. The result is stored in a Browse item variable. Then, I assign the image to the view property of Browse item. Here, the image successfully replaces the default appearance of the Browse toolbar item. Next, I'll customize the text icon in the toolbar. This is the default text icon displayed in the toolbar. To customize it, I replace the text icon by accessing the second toolbar, which is located at the first index. Next, I search for the text item in the footer toolbar. Eventually, I assign the text image to the view property of the text item. In the image editor, you will notice that the text image has replaced the default icon. Next, I will show you how to add an item to the existing toolbar. To do this, first, create an instance of the image. Then, assign the image to be displayed in the toolbar to the source property and set the required height and width. After that, retrieve the first toolbar. I access the second group item from the toolbar items representing the first index and cast it to the type of an image editor toolbar group item. Then, create a new toolbar item named Share and assign the image as its view. Look now, the newly created item is updated, making it a part of a toolbar. Next, I'll show you how to add the required items to the sub toolbar. This is the default sub toolbar of the crop icon. To modify it, first let me access the toolbar using an index and search for the item labeled crop from the list of available toolbar items. I set sub toolbar overlay to false 
to ensure that the newly added items do not overlap with the existing ones. This allows the sub toolbar to be positioned above the current toolbar. After that, I create a new list of toolbars to specify that when the crop item is selected, a set of sub toolbars should be displayed. I create a new image editor toolbar and assign its toolbar items to a specified list that includes three items, original, square, and custom. Now I run the application. When the crop icon is clicked, a sub toolbar with the given items appears above the existing toolbar. Next I'll show you how to add new colors to the palette. This is the default color palette present in the toolbar. In this instance, I utilize the color palette from the toolbar settings to add the desired colors. Likewise, you can add any number of colors based on your preference. Let's take a look at how this appears in the toolbar. See, the yellow, pink, and violet colors in your palette are ready for use. To display text with the toolbar item, use the text property of the browse item. Next, create an instance of image editor text style to customize the text's attributes, including the font family, size, and color. Before running the application, remove the custom view added to the browse. Look now, the text is displayed alongside the browse icon. You can disable the text icon on the toolbar by setting its is enabled property to false. Before running the application, I removed the custom view that was added to the toolbar text item. As a result, the text icon is now disabled. The image editor automatically creates toolbars. To disable the existing toolbar, I first navigate to the main page XAML. Then I set the auto-generate toolbar items to false. Now let me proceed to show you how to manually add items to the toolbar. I start by defining the toolbars with image editor toolbar and setting the position to end, indicating the items will be arranged to the footer. Next, define toolbar items with image editor toolbar group item, specifying the alignment as start to position the group on the left side of the toolbar. Next, I'll define the items to be added in the toolbar. For that, within the image editor toolbar group item, I define the items with image editor toolbar item and set the name as browse. You can also include another item named Reset in this group. To place the items on the right side, let's create another group of toolbar items with the alignment set to the end. In the Image Editor Toolbar Group item, I define the items using the Image Editor Toolbar item, naming them as Save and Save Edit. Check it out. At the bottom of the editor, the customized dual bar is displayed with each group positioned at various ends of the toolbar. You can adjust the toolbar's orientation by setting the orientation property to vertical. As you can see, the toolbar's orientation has been modified. You can customize the appearance of the toolbar by defining the toolbar settings with Image Editor Toolbar Settings and specifying your desired background color. Next, define your preferred values for icon color, disabled color, and icon size. Next, I move on to Main Page CS. 
Then modify the text color of the browse icon to ensure it aligns well with the customization. Before running the application, remove the code snippets related to the Customize toolbar. Now you will observe that the customizations have been successfully applied to the toolbar and its items. To display the names of each item in the toolbar, I enabled the Show Tooltip property. After loading, when you click an item in the toolbar, the tooltip will appear showing its name. Finally, I'll demonstrate how to display a pop-up notification when a toolbar item is selected. To do this, I set up an event handler for the toolbar item selection. The toolbar item selected event will be triggered when a user clicks an item in the toolbar and on toolbar item selected is the method that will handle this event. Next, I navigate to the event handler method. Within this method, include an alert message to display the name of the selected toolbar item along with cancel and OK buttons. Once the application is loaded, tapping on an item will display a pop-up message. Let's wrap up this video. You've learned how to replace toolbar items with images in the Syncfusion.net MAUI image editor control. You also saw how to disable toolbar items, adjust the orientation, create a custom toolbar, and modify the toolbar's appearance. If you want to see the examples work in code, download it from the GitHub link in the description below. I have also included a link to check if you qualify for our community license, which gives you a free license key for all of our .NET MAUI controls. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.